Okay, so what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we wanna talk about the Super EQ S1. This are Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphones that are selling for around $60. And in this video, we wanna find out if this are actually worth your money and if you should consider buying this if you're in the market for a pair of active noise cancelling headphones coming right up. So first things first, the unboxing experience. This particular device comes in this really interesting looking box. It's got all this nice designs on it that also has this interesting tagline, be young, be free. I actually quite like it. Uh, it also states on the box that you have 24 months of extended warranty, which is pretty impressive. And when you open up this really nice looking box, you're going to be greeted with a carrying case or a pouch, whatever you want to call this. It's like a nylon material bag that you can use to carry your headphones around, even though the headphones actually fold down. And aside to that, you're going to get some cables and some paperwork. For the cables, you're going to get the auxiliary cable, which is a really, really thick, high quality aux cable that you can use to listen to music or connect to devices that still have an auxiliary jack. And you get a charging cable. It's a really low quality cheapy, but it works if you need to use this to charge your device. Now, honestly, because this device is actually still using USB-A, it might be a problem finding a replacement cable around your house because almost everything is USB-C these days, but I'm pretty sure a lot of tech edit people probably still have one of those cables and if you don't, you can simply just buy a higher quality one off of Amazon for like $2 or something. Moving away from that, that's about everything that you're going to get with the unboxing. Now let's talk about the build quality and design of the headphones. The first thing that actually caught my attention taking the headphones out of the box was the red accent on the inner side side of the cup. So this is like full leather slash rubber, right? And it's red instead of the regular black that we get on most headphones that look like this. And I think it's actually pretty nice. For the plastic though, it feels like cheap plastic and it does feel like it will break with a little bit of flex or a little bit of push and use. And that's probably the only thing about these headphones that I don't like, how cheap the plastic feels. Uh, but for the most part though, it actually comes together. I like the air cups. I like the fact that this leatherish leatherette hair cups actually feel nice and it has a really really nice clamp to your head it doesn't feel uncomfortable and it's just really really nice on the right and the left ear cup there's the super eq logo which i think looks a little tacky i mean you could have just used the tinier logo that isn't as loud as this. Honestly, it feels like advertisement for a Chinese brand every time you put it on your head and go outside. But for the most part, it's actually not bad. You could tape that off if you don't like it. Personally, I'll probably tape this off, but it's not so terrible that they wanted to put their logo in such huge letterings on top of headphones that they sell. Now, for the price though, I don't think that the build quality and design language matches it. For 60 bucks, I'm expecting a little more, but let's hope that they actually make up for this in the sound quality department. Speaking a little bit more about the build quality and the physical beats of these headphones, on the right ear cup is where you pretty much get everything. You're going to get the charge port, which is the USB-A port for charging these headphones. You're going to get the auxiliary cable in where you actually plug these headphones in into an auxiliary jack so that you can... And then you're also going to get the button for the ANC. Now, this is not a suit, which is probably going to create some problems for you if this button ever stops working. You're going to be able to press it once to activate ANC, press it one more time to activate ambient sound so that you can talk to people around you and bring that sound in with the microphones. And you're going to have to hold it down to switch back to normal modes without ANC or ambient mode. If you just keep tapping this, tapping, tapping, it just continues to switch between ANC and switching between uh, ambient mode. On the top of that, you're going to get three buttons, right? Three of those buttons are going to be your play pause in the center, your forward track, previous track, as well as volume up, volume down as you can expect with most other headphones around this price point. That about sums it up for the build quality and what to expect from the physical design of the headphones. Now for the sound quality for these headphones, they are not something that I have not seen before. Like I've used a lot of headphones that sound exactly like this at exactly this price point. You'd be surprised they actually look exactly like this too. Um, I think the bass is there. It really is there. It does thump, but it's kind of very one directional. And the low mids can get a bit muddy, especially when you're listening to high bassy music, like electro, like 
techno, like maybe even some soul or some house music, this is probably going to fall apart very quickly at very high volumes. So I think maybe the audio quality is probably going to be a six out of 10 for me, but it sounds fine for this price point. It's not the most terrible thing. And I think that the vocals are actually pretty clear, especially when you're not using the active noise cancelling, because I'm not a huge fan of the quality of the noise cancelling on this. I mean, it works if you're traveling and you just need something to use on the airplane or on the bus to get rid of the cabin noise and actually be able to focus on your sleep or your reading or whatever it is you're doing, this worked fantastic. Uh, if you're listening to music with the noise cancelling though, the music tends to take a little bit of a hit because this does take out a lot of the bass and the music as most other active noise cancelling headphones do to be honest. So it's truthfully not that great, but it works fairly and that's about what you can expect or all you can expect at this price point. My hope is that you can probably get this on sale less than that $60 price point so that it can actually start to make sense and be worth the price that they're charging for it. Honestly, for the noise cancelling and what this offers, I'll probably pay $45 for this, maybe 50 at the most. 60 is just stretching it a little bit. Now, for the battery life of these headphones, I think that's probably where they completely win. If you're the kind of person that likes to use your headphones for a month and not remember to charge them, these are absolutely going to be the headphones to buy. You can get 50 hours of battery life out of this using just the active noise cancelling and listening with an aux cable. You can get around 45 hours just using the Bluetooth and you can get around 40 hours using the Bluetooth and the active noise cancelling at the same time. That's actually going to give you really, really, really high quality battery life, which is absolutely insane for this price point. I think for me, this is where this device wins and out of everything, battery life is where I'll probably give this device a 10 out of 10 for the price point. So I'm actually using the Super EQ S1 right now with my Pixel 3 XL so that you can get a sense of the audio quality that you can expect from the microphones when you're actually making phone calls with this device. This is the audio quality you can expect when you're out about on a, on a commute and you know you want to take a phone call or you're actually just indoors hanging out with friends and there's a few people around you and you're trying to talk to somebody over the phone. This is the audio quality that they're going to be getting and I think it actually sounds fairly okay. It's not fantastic, but it's fine for this price point. One of my favorite things about this device is the fact that when you actually connect it to multiple devices at the same time, it automatically switches between devices that you're using. Let me help you make sense of that. When you have your phone and maybe your iPad connected, you're listening to music on your phone, right? Uh, it starts to play music from there automatically. But say you pause that music and you walk into another room, pick up your iPad and start watching Netflix, it automatically switches the audio over to your iPad and starts to play from there as well, without no lag or any delay. That for me is actually pretty impressive. It still blows my mind that a pair of headphones at $60 can actually do this when headphones that cost $300 sometimes can't even do that. Really, really impressive stuff from Super EQ. So I suppose now I have to give you my verdict on what I think about these headphones. I think for $60, they're a little expensive. If they were $45 or just under $50, I would be perfectly fine paying a full price for this or advising you to pay full price for this. But adding the fact that this does not have USB-C, the fact that the plastic feels a little cheap and not very durable, and the fact that I think the audio quality is just mid at best, maybe just a little over mid at best, I think these are overpriced. But if you find them on sale for around $45, $49 or maybe even less, I would absolutely say go ahead and buy this. I think they're actually really, really decent pair of headphones if the price is right. Thank you so much for watching and that was my review of the Super EQ S1. Be young, be free, and I guess I will see you on another video that was shot by Kagan. Peace. Ta -ta!